So as uh, David was talking there, here's some questions I got. Uh, Mike, hello, Mike. Exchanges use your coin the same way how banks use your money in bank. Yeah, it seems like fractionalized <laughs> lending is not just reserved for banks. We thought that uh, these places were taking adequate collateral. Maybe that wasn't the case. Everything comes out in the wash. We'll see how it works, but uh, not looking good. The Mad Monk, would it be good if there are insurance companies coming in the crypto space? We refer someone within the crypto. Hey, Beardy. <laughs> Beardy's, Beardy's more popular on my, on my stream than I am, which, is, which stands to reason. He's a pretty popular person. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I don't know if, I guess the question would be, would everybody want to pay insurance for their DeFi plays or their different crypto plays going to zero? I think I would actually. I thought there was a insurance company out there. The question is, are they still around for crypto? That'd be the big question. Uh, every exchange is a scam. They all do front running and wash trading. That's the whole point of getting in the middle of a peer to peer network where they are not needed. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice if we could just, what well, we do, it's called DEXs. Yeah, decentralized exchange allows us to connect to people. However, there's always going to be market makers and there's always going to be slippage and problems like that. And of course, unfortunately, a lot of the large DEXs with a lot of liquidity are Ethereum based. So you're going to be paying a lot in fees, but maybe that's a good alternative to uh, what we're seeing right now. Uh, Dan, you should get a CryptoPunk or the one that came before the CryptoPunks. Yeah, maybe. All right. Echoes from above. I'm going to be on his channel at some point. Uh, he says, I'm not a fan of Voyager. Oh, I know you're not. I've seen the videos, but I respect your opinion. That's nice. See, that's how it works. People can disagree agree to disagree. And uh, there we go. Oh, Alex Mashinsky was stopped in the airport. News to follow. Dan is a what? That's true. Dan is a Web2 Max. He can say I'm old. And that's it. Uh, was Voyager your favorite? Voyager was your favorite. Voyager's still my favorite. Look, I got to buy crypto someplace and uh, I still like using the service itself. It just, you know, you can't keep anything anywhere. Now I'm a little bit more diligent in taking things off. Sometimes I, you know, I always say like, you know, keep 3% on your portfolio on any one crypto exchange if you have to. I was letting things slide uh, until, you know, Celsius came along. And then we did that video on Sunday, nine hours later, everything was stopped. So it made me realize that, you know, 3% is it. But thankfully, it really was 3% because... I was kind of I was kind of ticked off already with that earn program because of the accredited investor. I was like, why? What good does it do me? I mean, obviously, I can make more money by saying, here's my credit investor paperwork. Fine, whatever. And then I give me more more yield. But I'm like, what about the other people who aren't accredited investors? They kind of get screwed. So I'm like, nah, forget it. And I, I, tr I turned over to custody. And I was like, well, it's in custody. I'm like, getting this. So I just took it off. So that was it. So actually, I mean, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. And then um, Robert Goss, good point. Could be a miner needing cash. Maybe that was, that might have been from this. I think we're talking about this one right here, where we could see uh, a big uh, inflow. Yeah, it could be miners. You know, well, let's take a look here. Hold on, let me stop. Let me stop. You want to take a look? Let's look at some data. Let me put in my super secret password. One, two, three, four, five. It's the same combination as my luggage. So let's see here. Ah, okay. Let me share my screen. So maybe, let's see how many. Ooh, well, that could be a good point, actually. Nah, not really. I mean, as far as Bitcoin miners go, Let's take a look at a year. Well, here's Bitcoin miners outflow. So you can see there's a big jump here in 27 July. Of course, there was a, well, was a big jump here when, well, look at that. When the price of Bitcoin was 62,000, you had a big jump of miners coming and selling. Hey, you know, for all that talk about diamond hands and never letting go and da 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 da, -da well, guess what? Um, careful who you listen to because not everybody's doing that. Sometimes I just think that diamond hand comment is just manufactured so people won't sell. That's just my opinion. 
But I've done away with that a long time ago. And then here, oh, look at this. And there was a spike of Bitcoin price. It happens again. Now as it's going lower, I think it's just not profitable. And they got to get out and get out. Let me blow this. Let's look at a week. Eh, not really, really. But tomorrow we'll see if those spike up. But maybe not what it was, what we think it is. All right. Good, good point. And let's see. Uh, Ian, thanks for coming a member. I don't didn't realize I even had that things turned on. I think it's like it's like two bucks and you get a thing next to your name. That's cool. I turned off all the super chats because don't spend money on super chats. I'll answer most of your questions anyhow. So just save your money and and buy some crypto. Not financial advice. Beardy, rookie numbers in the racket. Who knows? James is here. Jeez, I got nothing but celebrities. I got James. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. And I got Jungle Inc., another, another legend. I read Palestine was using Tron for stable coins. You think Sun, Justin Sun, could build on real adoption, but he had to run out of his <laughs> coin. There's this guy. His name's Coffeezilla. I encourage everybody to, to look him up. He did a great one on on this Tron stablecoin. And he took a look at some on-chain data for all the different, um, you know, who was minting and who was using it. And it was like 90 something percent Justin Sun. So yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, Kendall says, I'm confused on the 3K price. Okay, I did, I did a bad job, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Rob didn't do a good job of explaining it. So let me go back. So there's a link in the description and it's going to say, it's going to give you three steps to win 3000 bucks. Unstoppable domains came to me and go, Hey, we want to do a promo. And, uh, I said, okay, well, and I really don't, don't you don't do promos. They said, we're going to give away money. I said, great. We'll give it all to my, all my subscribers. And you know, what's great about giving all the way to my subscribers. I don't have to hit that stupid button where it says that, uh, this is a sponsored, whatever. So, uh, they just give it to you guys. So 3000 bucks is what you got to do. You have to mint your blockchain domain. So what you got to do is the first thing is you're going to go to Unstoppable Domains. And you're going to find, let's see, let's go Dan. Uh, this is probably taken, I would guess. Yeah, of course it is. So you got to find something that's like a dot, like a dot com or a dot IO. Well, these are. These are Web3 uh, addresses, and uh, you just got to mint a dot blockchain. They're very cheap. Well, not Dan's blockchain. Sweet Mary and Joseph. Dan's dot blockchain is five grand. You got to be kidding me. I would find something cheap, something that represents you. Maybe D News. Oh, unreleased. Very nice. So it might cost you 20 bucks or whatever. Then you take that, and then you mint it. And there's, there's plenty of videos on, on how to mint on stuff. And they actually have some here under Learn, the Learning Hub. It'll tell you everything you want to know. Anyhow, you take that dot blockchain, you attach your ERC-20 address, or you attach your USDC address. ERC-20 is a token. It's on the Ethereum blockchain. So if you have an Ethereum wallet or if you have it in any exchange, you can actually use that. I recommend it, but okay. And then you just uh, attach it to the blockchain to, excuse me, to the, to the unstoppable domain that you minted. Again, it's, you can watch these and how to do that. Let's see. Right here. What to do after purchasing domain. It'll, there's a video right there. And then lastly, you submit this form. You're going to go to this website. I linked that in the description. You put in your full name, your email address, your dot blockchain name. And have you read the terms and conditions? And that's it. And they're gonna group it by RAM. You're, you're not gonna win three thousand bucks. It's six winners of five hundred bucks. So I hope that makes sense. And let's see. Mike says, "No way, you actually tell community sell." Look, um, what I think what we're talking about is <clears throat> with David at uh, Coin Ledger. Is remember that wash trading only it only goes for equities, not for crypto. So you can sell all your crypto if you wanted to and just generate massive losses. Now, depending on where you're at, you can only use so much, so much of those losses. And I think I want to say it's between three and $5,000 per year per annum. 
of how much you can use for, for losses. So just be aware of that. Like I got some big losses, which I'll be using over the next like 20 years. <laughs> that's just how it goes. So that's what they're saying. But um, again, once you, and with equities, you can't sell it and then immediately buy it right back. You have to sell it. I believe you have to wait 30 days before you can uh, reacquire. But in crypto, it's property. So that's it. Now they are talking about getting away or stopping that, that as David calls it, an opportunity. So, uh, but that is still legal to my knowledge right now. And that's it. So yeah, Keech, I thought watch sales are no longer available for crypto leisure. There was, they were talking about putting into a bill and that's all that was, which was a lot of talk, which is what Congress is good for, talk. Ian says, hey, Rob, I managed to get four parcels of land in the cryptoverse last Monday. Oh, pretty cool. And I bet it was cheap too. So I did a video over on Dan Degen, which is the risky stuff. Here is just the basic meat and potatoes, dollar cost average. You know, don't be very safe. You know, maybe, maybe pinch that penny a little harder. Uh, but over in Dan Degen, it's like, hey, let's gamble. That's essentially, no, I'm not saying we're legitimately gambling, but that is like super risky stuff over there. So I do not recommend those for everybody. Not for the faint of heart. And Beardy says, don't worry, in five years, we'll all be wearing gold-plated diapers. That would be sweet. All righty, Daddy. What else we got? Uh... <laughs> what was this? David S. So what you're really saying is in a bear market where our friends and family and even big exchanges are having their clocks clean because of lack of regulation. Nah, I'm not saying about that. It's not because of, it's not because regulation is going to lead to, is the reason why there's a bear market. I will tell you this. If there was a little more clarity, I can almost guarantee uh, that there will be a lot bigger institutions flowing into the crypto space at some point. I don't think they would get into it now because it's they're getting out of a lot of things, especially risk on assets. Take a look at the NASDAQ. But what it allows people to do, especially, you can talk about Wall Street or institutions or who you want to talk to, deep, deep pocket players. Their whole thing is they already have money. Their whole thing is risk assessment and making sure they don't lose the money they already have and growing it as much as they possibly can within the allowable amount of risk. And when you have a, a sector that has essentially no regulation or very little limited regulation, the rewards are very high, but the risks are even higher. So why would they do it? Like, well, I just go over here and do something a little bit safer. And on my 100 million, 10 billion, uh, $3 trillion that I'm able to invest, I'll just get you know, five to six percent, seven percent. That's huge money. Why would I go over to crypto when there's not many regulation? So that's what I'm trying to say here. That's all. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the Mousy market? I think it's uh, if you're a real estate agent, might be time to look for another gig. I'm not. Uh, I'm very worried about the real estate market, especially with the rates going up, because. You have to understand when people are looking for, let me get rid of this, hold on. When people are looking for houses, it's not so much the price so much for the house, uh, really what it is is the monthly payment. Just like when you go to the car dealership, right? What do they say? What's the first thing they tell you? How much you want to pay per month for this Nissan Path, whatever it is. You say, well, 500, 600 bucks. Okay, we can put you in that car today. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. at this rate and this rate, this rate. And they manipulate numbers, whatever else. It's the same thing when you're looking for a house, right? You get pre-approved, you get your pre-approved letter, go around, take a look. They say, well, you know, per month, you can afford this much. Unfortunately, because of the interest that has gone up, uh, what you would have paid 1,400 bucks for six, eight, nine months ago, now you're going to pay 1,900 bucks for the exact same price house because of the higher interest rates, amortization tables, right? So if you're taking a look at that, a lot of people are getting priced out and they're not going to be able to pay for it. And I think uh, you're going to have too much inventory for uh, houses and people are going to just start drying up. That's why we have friends in construction and they're telling us that uh, a lot of the home builders are they're talking about slowing down right now dramatically and not building so many houses because they know they know what's going to happen. So that only makes sense to me. Why would I want all this inventory that just sits around and I can't, uh, it's an illiquid asset just sitting there. I can't sell it. I wouldn't want to do that. 
I mean, they still will, but whatever. Yeah, you know, bullish whiz, all roads lead to Bitcoin. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, the longer I've been in this, in this space, the more of a Bitcoin maxi I start to become. I mean, sorry. There's no rug pulls. It's already been up. It's last for the test of time and so on and so forth. Now, the next bull run, I will be called a boomer or I may be called a boomer right now. I'm not for sure. But people will always tell me what a moron I am because uh, it's a boomer coin. It doesn't really do anything. It's old technology. And the, only, the only advantage it has is first mover advantage. Well, let me tell you. I'm doing good so far since 2010. Decade plus. Works out okay. Does that mean that there's not room for altcoins? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I get disenchanted from a lot of them as time goes on. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> David, SEC fooled y'all and you're brown nosing them. Look, I don't care how I got to get it done. I don't care if I got a Trojan horse it to get into these institutions. But uh, I just want them to do their job, give a little clarity, and go from there. Of course, here's the problem, though. There's a flip side of that. As the institutions come in, we love when the institutions come in, don't we? And they bring all that money. But guess what they're going to do? Manipulation. They're going to do a lot of selling. They're going to do a lot of buying. But they're not going to see the grand scheme of things and they'll sell they'll dump just like what they do with everything and there's there trust me there is no mantra of diamond hands in institutions in wall street i'm sorry uh yeah live and learn i'll see you rip celsius maybe boomer power that makes me sleepy let's see more i listen to max kaiser i like bitcoin ah max said on I like Planet Rays. I don't know. I'd probably listen to Planet Rays more than I would Kaiser. Brandon says, Kavi Zilla has Sam describing crypto industry as a Ponzi scheme without really knowing what he's saying. Eh, you got to understand. Take it with a grain of salt. What's the first rule? Actually, what's the second rule? Everything's a scam. So we can take everything with a grain of salt, even me. Like even the things that I'm talking to you about, I try to link them in the description so you can actually you know look them up and uh, verify. But even the things that I say, you can't take it for face value. You gotta take it, just dig into it and go, was that a deep fake that Rob showed me? Did Gary Gensler really say that? What's going on? And you gotta just dig and dig and dig. And that's the only way to, to get it done. So like with CoffeeZilla, I mean, it's entertaining. I'll tell you that. But uh, is he get it right all the time? No, because nobody does. Because nobody's perfect. It's a good question, though. Yeah, John, John Paul, you never mentioned Dana. I know I got to take a look in that. Love you. What percentage have you lost? What percentage have you lost this, this far this year? See, remember, well, Lou and I lost hundred percent. Let's just be let's just be transparent. And then I got liquidated on my uh, uh, crypto loan from Celsius, which in hindsight wasn't a bad deal because. It was like I got liquidated at 2300 or 2200 when Ethereum was $2,200. Remember those days? Oh, those are good days. Got liquidated and uh, that was my loan. The good news is, is that uh, the liquidation, I already had the cash and the cash went to the house in Puerto Rico and now the, the house is paid off. So yeah, it wasn't more than a bad deal. And then the uh, Ethereum that wasn't was collateralized. I was over collateralized. I got that Ethereum moved to me. I took that Ethereum and I swapped it for Bitcoin and I transferred it out. So as far as like that part, as far as like how much I'm down in my portfolio, it's a pretty good amount. But I, I, I told everybody before, we sh- it's, the market's a little overheated. We should sell some, take profits. It's one of my rules. It's the last rule in my rules. I got to take profits. So I did. I didn't take as much as I should have, but no one ever will. And I'll never time it right. So to say I'm down, I don't know, 40%, 30%, 40%. I don't really look too much because the only thing I'm really looking for I'm just keeping an eye on how much I dollar cost average every week. I take a look at the news and see when the Fed's going to pivot. I take a look at just the basic on-chain data that I can just to see if I should start to ramp up my dollar cost average. And that's what I really care about. Because in three, five, ten years, I'll still be here. The question is, will you be here? I mean, I hope I'll be here. Who knows? My heart might give out. Uh, Let's see. Do I have faith in Ethereum long term? No, I don't. Yeah, and I got time. We got time. 
it's not like the old days when you have to like invest for, you know, 30 years, just, you know, put in that savings account, wait for that business to give you that sweet pension right off into the sunset. <laughs> it doesn't happen anymore. Unless you're in the army. That's about it. You know, good pensions for the army, decent pensions for the army, but, uh, or government jobs. But besides that, it's not the same way. So yeah, I've got time. This is funny. Robert, I tell you, I don't know Jack, but I was impressed with Cardano's best practice of not doing on-chain changes without first preview. It is pretty interesting. And I got to tell you, in one, in one account, they nailed staking. Staking is super easy. I did a video yesterday. Got a lot of, got a lot of guff about it. But trust me. No, no, no. Don't trust me. Verify. Never trust. Verify. Go take a look at, uh, try, to, try to stake Cardano. Just, just go do it. I got a video about it. It's linked in the description. And uh, you can put it on. Uh, you can take it off. There's no lockup periods. Uh, APY is between 4 and 6%. There's a plethora of different uh, uh, of nodes of stake pools you can join. And you can verify and take a look at them all. Uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, it works great and flawlessly. I don't think Cardano's ever been down, has it? They have NFTs and DEXs. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good question. One mad one Martinez. What regulations do you believe should be in place? There's there's really, uh, well, I guess you want to say four, but it really comes down to this. Uh, we need clarity. So we need clarity. What is a secure, what is a security? Okay, give that to Gary. If it's a security, it goes to Gary. What is a commodity? Well, that goes to Yellen, go to CFTC. What is uh, a currency? Well, that goes to the OCC, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. And then maybe, hopefully, if they get it right, they say, you know what? Maybe we don't even want to do that. Maybe we just make a fourth one and we call those digital assets and we have that. That would be like what we call in the military, like when I was a combat medic, we call it triage. You just triage different cryptos and just say, okay, this, 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 and off you go. I don't think it's going to be that way. So at least give us clarity. And the second, or I guess the fourth one, would be stable coins. I truly believe that if you call yourself a stable coin, you need to back it up with something that is actually stable and is pegged to something except hopes, dreams, and unicorn wishes. So I really think that they should, if, if you say, I have a, I, here's, a, we have a hundred billion market cap, you should have a hundred billion dollars or assets that are real assets that you can liquidate to fulfill that process if there is a run in the bank. And the only way that can happen, I mean, let's be honest, a little regulation and uh, someone to actually take a look at that, that data. Now, it would be awesome if you could use like Chainlink and verify that on chain and, and pull this off this uh, off chain data uh, into the blockchain. Then people could just verify, anybody could verify. That would be sweet. But I don't think we ha we're there yet. So, stuff like that, I think, is uh, pretty important. And then also, uh, I think it's, it's pretty important for what uh, Lummis, Senator Lummis from Wyoming, talked about, which is distinguish uh, if you are uh, a broker. If you are a, uh, a moderator or a node or you, you are uh, responsible for staking, uh, staking pools, that you don't have to KYC and AML all of your customers. That's ridiculous. So things like that, I think, are the base. And then we shoot off from there, whatever that, whatever that comes to. <laughs> your wife is photobombing. She's, well, she takes precedent. That's why. She's the better, she's the better of both of us. I was just talking to the, the Jerry, our friend Jerry Hall, and uh, he's going to do some uh, real estate investment over in Costa Rica. And he's got, uh, he's, he bought property where there's a 50 foot waterfall and he's got eight different houses all around it. We're going to do a video series on it. It's going to be pretty good. And he was just asking, he's like, well, you know, with Airbnb and, and how's that work? I go, there's the mastermind right here. And Gabby was right here when we talked to him about, the different things that he should look at and, and look to do and some cost analysis. And it was pretty good. Why no faith in Ethereum? It's a blue chip, right? I just, I know it's supposed to be, first of all, that difficulty bomb got delayed. So that'll, uh, that'll increase the time between uh, from moving from proof of work to proof of stake. So it doesn't make it uh, unminable for the miners right now. 
So they're going to push that out. That's fine. But the thing that, that concerns me is this, there's, there was three different sections to get to what would, was called ETH 2.0 on the other. And I don't know what's called now. I always forget. So the first part of that already uh, should happen. The next one we're looking at is uh, the merge, which is going from uh, the beacon or the beacon chain to going on to the proof of proof of stake consensus, and then moving into sharding, which would be the third and final step. And that's not even going to come until we don't even know. The merge has even been delayed. So, the, so I just look at it and I just think it's just it's a difficult thing because it's like building a foundation of, you know, if you don't have that foundation of, of concrete right for a very tall structure, it doesn't matter how much support you, you, you build as you go up, it'll still crumble. And I just, I have a hard time with Ethereum. And I think it's got a first mover advantage, that's for sure. But I mean, so did Friendster. And so did MySpace. Hell, even Facebook had a pretty good, pretty good run there for a while. So I just, I, I look at it and go, just because you're a first mover advantage, I mean, Blockbuster was crushing it for over a decade. I don't know if there's any even open. <sighs> I don't know about that. Oh, this is a great question. I will bring this up to, to uh, Simon Dixon. Celsius had said that they did over collateralize loans to retail and institution. So did that not happen? I don't want to get sued. So I'm just going to say, I don't know. Yeah. Proof of reserves. That's the thing. I don't know. That's why like the only stable coin I use is USDC. And the reason why I do it is because the CEO, Alaire, I always say his name, hopefully right, Alaire. He went before Congress and said, we are 100% backed. And here's all the paperwork and documentation that you need. You can pour through it. And here's all our assets. So the things that we talk about as far as like the billions of dollars we have, we have it right here in reserves. So if there is a run or people want to take out all their USDC or all for just cash, here's the, here's the documentation. I'm like, I like that. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh how bullish are you in meld? I, you know, I was supposed to talk to Ken Oling a couple of weeks ago over in Austin. I missed him. I like, again, projects are great. They look good. And this was, there was a question that was asked of me two sessions ago. And it was a great question. I think it was by John Marie, John something, John Marie, John Luke. And he said, Hey, Rob, he goes, if you take a look at your cut, which is, Will it make the cut? The community utility tokenomics and time. Didn't that fit the criteria for Celsius and Voyager? So if it fit the criteria, well, what you use, why did it still collapse? And I, I had this lackluster answer. And I really thought about it for like the whole day. And I was thinking to myself, the cut really is to help you distinguish between like these new products that are coming out. And that's, it helps out a tremendous amount when you have, like, we're going to talk about sweat, we, the, the four products, the four projects I've reviewed on Dan Degen was Genso Kishi, it was Everdome, Fame, and then now we just did one called Sweatcoin. Video will be out soon. And the four things that those all had in common was a massive, massive community before they even got into crypto. So like with Genso Kishi, it was called Elemental Knights. It was already on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Android, and iOS, and it had millions of players. They were going from free to play to play to earn. And to me, I'm like, that's, that's a slam dunk. They already have people coming in. Why not? And then with Everdome, they have with MetaHero. And then with uh, Fame, it's the uh, Mixed Martial Art Federation over in uh, EU, more specifically in Poland. And the people that fight in there are all uh, influencers, YouTubers, and TikTokers and stuff like that. So I'm like, that's a huge win. And then with uh, Sweatcoin, uh, they have over 100 million users. It's the number one app. It's the number one health and fitness app on the globe with over 100 million people, it took them 11 days to get to 1 million crypto wallets. It took them 21 days to get to two, uh, 2 million wallets. And now they're already sitting at 10 million wallets. So when I took a look at this and I'm like, there's no way that, that because they have so much, the, the community drives so much before they were, it's, it, it's, it's easy enough. Anyhow, utility and tokenomics and team are one thing. So the question then was like with, like with Meld and Voyager and uh, Celsius, what happened? So cut can get you, 
through the door and understand and eliminate a lot of those other crap projects that are out there because they don't really have the, the pedigree and they can't make it. The next step is sustainability and scaling. And for that one, that just is just you being on top of your investments and making sure that you study as much as you possibly can and keep on them. And a prime example, a prime example was when I lost a bunch of money in uh, zero token, damn exchange. So what I did was I bought this zero token something or other, and they did a token swap. I didn't pay attention. I lost all my money because I wasn't paying attention. And uh, that's the same thing with like all these ones, like with, like with the Celsius, uh, with, you know, potentially what was, whatever's going to happen to all the different other ones. If we don't stay on top of it, that's the only way because the cut can get you through the door and find you the good ones. And it's up to you to kind of maintain and just keep up to date, just like what Warren Buffett does every single week, month and year for all of his uh, stocks that he invests into to make sure that, hey, these prop, these these P&E earnings are a little bit off or these earnings ratios are just awful. I got to get out of here. It's not a one and done thing. You have to keep on it. So that uh, that's what cut is for as opposed to like the longer ones. OK. <sighs> No, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, for, it wasn't, uh, the $3,000 to give away for Bitcoin. It was for, uh, unstoppable domains. I'll have to do this in Spanish at some point. Sorry. Uh, Rob debating about selling my house and be on a big cash position. I got to tell you, uh, we sold two of our houses. Damn it. When was that? I don't know. February? Somewhere around there. February, March, I think. January, February, March, somewhere around there. Uh, two of them that were here in Houston. It was just the right time. I think now it's a little bit more difficult, especially with the rates going up. So, uh, I can't, first of all, I can't even tell you what to do because I'm not a financial advisor no way there's only one blockbuster left <laughs> i can't even i can't even talk about that one all right everybody it's been an hour so that's it so uh look if you like today's video give it a thumbs up give it a like uh subscribe all that good stuff and thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me for an hour if you liked it uh come on back tomorrow we'll do the same thing i think actually I take that back. I just lied to you. Uh, I'm probably not going to do a video tomorrow because we got to do a lot of things with the other house to get things ready. And then we'll go back to El Paso. But a lot of good things are coming up. We've got uh, Simon from or Simon Dixon from the uh, Celsius restructure plan. And then uh, we'll go from then another surprise coming up next week. So that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios.